Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of the Washington Redskins franchise here on Madden 20. Don't be afraid to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button. If you are new to the channel, hit the notification bell. Don't miss any more of these episodes as well as the other three franchises on this channel. Thank you guys for joining us. We have a little radio show for you guys here today, and then we will get into the gameplay. So let's get it started. Never back down. We will not relent. Now and never till the day that we dream of. The day that we dream of. All right, so in this episode, we are going to take on the Philadelphia Eagles here on the road. And then we have like a trade deadline going on here in week eight, which happens to be our bye week before we take on the New York Giants. So let's go to the phone, see what we have out there. First caller, you are up. It seems as if your defense has been a little bit behind the offense so far to start the season, giving up a lot of points to your opponents. What adjustments do you think the Redskins are going to make to be able to, I guess, have a more well-rounded team where they're not having to score a lot of points to win games, per se? Well, you could see throughout the season so far that the Redskins have been trying to make adjustments on defense. There was obviously some locker room cancer in the beginning of the year. You had Josh Norman getting into fights, Avery Williamson getting into fights in the locker room. And they've tried to solve those things. Both of those players are gone now. A lot of the youth movement is starting to really take form. And we have to kind of see where that goes. A lot of these guys are raw raw talents. I mean, Keon Wild's great, but he is raw still. Just a rookie. Guys like Cole Holcomb, they're young. You know what I mean? You have to... Kind of give them a little bit of time. I think when Sean Dion Hamilton comes back into the lineup here... I think we're going to have a better defense. The problem is that middle of the field is really getting taken advantage of, and it really needs to stop. Hopefully somebody can step up and make some big plays. Hello, my name is Mommy. I just wanted to get your opinion on the start of the season for the Redskins. Do you think they're going to make the playoffs again this season, or are they going to regress a little bit? Now that right there, Bobby, is a solid question, and a valid one at that. Who knows? I mean, right now, the entire league is going through some kind of weird thing where there's not really that many great teams out there, and there's a lot of teams really fighting for a playoff spot right now, and the Redskins are actually one of them. We'll see if they're able to get the job done, but I understand how last couple of weeks' performance and the beginning of the year, the way it started, getting blown out against Atlanta, losing a tough one on a Hail Mary to the Steelers, getting beat by the Bengals. I understand how that can really be concerning, and it is. But Darius Geis has really taken form this year. And you gotta like that. I think Haskins has regressed slightly, and that is a little bit concerning. He's having a little bit of sophomore slumps here, but if he can just get better and better throughout the season, I really think the Redskins can have something here. I think when Terry McLaurin comes back later in the year, the receiving core will be a little bit more dynamic. I like Ratley, but he does drop some passes. Paul Richardson obviously can get the job done, but he's always facing a top corner. And Kelvin Harmer really hasn't done much in his career. So the weapons out there at receiver aren't exactly the strongest. I think maybe going a little bit more heavy could be a good idea for this team. And I want you guys to let me know on next week's radio show what you think of that i think maybe going a two tight ends type of set with darius geist kind of leading the ball carrying and maybe th trying to throw to jordan reed and dallas goddard a little bit more uh could really help out this squad what do you guys think on that but that is all for today's radio show 
And I really hope you guys can send in your questions. Again, you guys can do that via email. Send it to FranchiseGuy88 at gmail.com with your audio and or video questions, as well as tweet it out at FranchiseYT88 on Twitter with your questions, too. I can use that for the next episode. Thank you guys for taking a peek at this radio show, and let's get into the games. All right, here we are in the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. It's Haskins on the play fake, and he's going to get sacked on third and three by Derek Barnett. Not what you want to see to open up, but here's the Eagles' first possession. It's Miles Sanders, the Penn State product, going to get a 12-yard carry. Now it's Wentz over to Miles Sanders coming out of the backfield. Look at that hit. Look at the stiff arm by Miles as he picks up the first down there. Now on a third and six, it's Wentz, and he's got Zach Ertz inside the five-yard line. Good pickup. Third and goal for the Eagles now, and it is Wentz looking and firing to his right. He completes the pass to Deshaun Jackson, but they settle for three. Here's a third and 20 for the Redskins downfield complete. What a catch by Jordan Reed. And now on a third and one, it cannot be converted by Geis. Redskins fail there. They punt third and nine. The Eagles fail. So the Redskins getting the ball back here late first quarter. It's going to be a throw from Haskins, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Avante Maddox. And the Eagles take over with the football here on third and eight. It's going to be a throw and a completion to J.J. Arcega, or white side. And now a third and 17 for Carson Wentz and his Eagles as he's going to throw right side again. That one's incomplete, and the Eagles will have to punt again. So here's second quarter, still a 3-0 game. Haskins goes down at the hands of Fletcher Cox. His first sack of the day. Now third and 16. Here's Haskins again and again. Pressure up the middle. Fletcher Cox with two sacks. First and 10 for the Eagles. There's a throw. It's Zachary Ertz, and he is going to pick up the first down very easily here. First and 10 for the Eagles, and another throw, another completion, and that's Alshon Jeffrey with the catch. So now second and six for the Eagles. There's a completion and a touchdown across the middle. Beautiful catch right there by Nick Vanette. And that puts the Eagles on top, 10-0. Here's Haskins rolling out on a third and 11. He's going to throw. That would have been caught by Damian Ratley, but a huge hit will jar it loose. First and 10 for the Eagles as they take over after a punt. And there's Zach Ertz with a big catch. He's going to break a tackle and go down the right sideline until Landon Collins makes the tackle. Now third and 10 for the Eagles. A little short throw. That's not going to pick up the first down. Redskins get another chance here with 2.20 to play in the half. It's a throw down field. It's under thrown and picked off. Again, Avante Maddox, just a ball hawk today. As the Eagles take over before the half. Third and 11, it's going to be Ertz and complete, but not going to get there. So the Eagles going to punt it here on fourth and two. And look at the punt right there at the one-yard line. Redskins going to try to want, run their way out of it. And Geis not going to do it. A safety. Eagles go up 12-0, and they get the ball back here. Third and 13. There's a completion, but it will not go for a first down. Not a lot of time left here for the Redskins on a first and 10. They're going to complete this pass to Paul Richardson. He's got open field, but... It all goes for naught as time runs out on the half. Eagles get the ball to open up the second half, and it's going to be Arcega Whiteside with a nice catch for a first down. Now a second and five, and there's a beautiful catch from Zach Ertz with defenders draped on him. Here's second and six, and that's Whiteside again. Another huge catch for him. He's done a great job so far, the young rookie, or now second-year pro. Second and 10, it's a big sack by Matthew Ioannidis. That's his second of the day. Third and 17, that brings up for the Eagles. And Wentz going to throw this one short. 
And that's not going to do it, but a field goal makes it 15-0. Here's Darius Geis on the rush, and that's a nice first down pickup as he's now starting to gain some real yards. Here's a play fake for Haskins. He's going to go down at the hands of Fletcher Cox again. Three sacks. Here is Haskins, and he's going to go down again. This time, Brandon Graham with his second sack of the day, and the Eagles' D-line coming up huge. Short throw there on third and four, and the screen sniffed out, so the Redskins get another chance, but another huge sack right there. Fletcher Cox, fourth time in Haskins' face. Miles Sanders going to take the carry here on second and two. He'll pick up a first down, now second and seven, and it's Sanders again, and this time to the right side on the counter, and he's inside the five to the one-yard line. Eagles with a goal-to-go situation. Here's a second and goal. There's a throw into Sean Jackson, dives into the end zone for the touchdown, giving the Eagles the clear three-possession lead here, 22-0. Here's Haskins looking on a third and 19. It's going to be a fumble. And that thing is hit into like the fourth row of the stands. Take another look at this thing. Haskins with the fumble, but look how far that thing goes. Now watch what EA Sports gives them. First and 10 from their own four. Philadelphia Eagles will have this. And Miles Sanders goes nowhere on first down. Third and 11, they're going to hand this one off. And it goes for a pretty good gain for Adams, but he goes nowhere really in the grand scheme of things. Here's second and 12. Haskins gets away from one sacker. He's going to run to the right. He's trying to throw it, but Fletcher, or that's Brandon Graham, excuse me. Two and a half sacks on the day. Here's a throw right there. That's going to be incomplete on fourth and 25. So the Eagles going to take over here late fourth quarter. And an easy touchdown grab for Zachary Ertz. That's going to be 29-0. Here's Haskins. And again, the jail is broken loose. Brandon Graham, three and a half sacks today. Here's second and 22. And again, he's going to get there. This time, Derek Barnett with his second Sacks galore. They just make Haskins a sack of potatoes today. Carson Wentz, 263 yards, three touchdowns. Haskins, 91 yards, two picks. Just not a good day for Dwayne Haskins. Miles Sanders gets himself 78 yards on 4.3 a carry. Darius Geis, 48 yards on six per carry. There just wasn't a lot of opportunity for us to be running the ball all day today. 113 and a touchdown for Ertz. Whiteside had himself 55 yards. We really didn't have anything big on the receiving end. We really couldn't get going on offense at all. 10 tackles for Montez Sweat as he starts to emerge as a good defensive player. Look at this. Seven and a half sacks for Fletcher Cox. Three and a half for Graham. That's 11 right there. And then add the two from Barnett. You got 13 sacks from the D-line. Two picks for Avante Maddox. Huge defensive plays from the Eagles, but Sean Dion Hamilton going to come back for our next game, and we are really missing him. We've been missing a middle linebacker ever since Avery Williamson was traded, and now Trent Williams is going to be the scapegoat for the 13-sack game as he's going to be let go here. Redskin management just thinking he's too old at this point, and they're going to pick up some picks from the Indianapolis Colts. Jonathan Allen, there was some trade offers on the table for from multiple teams to pick up Jonathan Allen, but the Redskins ultimately felt he was more valuable than anything that they could get back, so they signed him back to a four-year deal, exactly the offer he was hoping to get, and Jonathan Allen will remain a Washington Redskin. To hear Whitehead, who was picked up in trade, with the Avery Williamson deal, is traded to the New York Giants for a third-round draft pick. And Tim Williams is signed in free agency for a one-year deal for the rest of the season. Terry McLaurin could play, the doctors say, but we're going to play it safe with him. And now we'll take on the New York Giants and Garrett Hoke, the rookie quarterback, going to run it right away on a third and nine, pick up a first down. Now first and 10, it's going to be Saquon Barkley, and look at the run by Barkley as he picks up over 10 yards for the first down. 
Third and seven, and Barkley should have been hit in the backfield, but he ends up picking up the first down. Absolutely great. Here is a play fake for Hoke, and he's gonna throw that one complete inside the 10 yard line. Giants in business here early. Third and goal, it's Hoke, and he's gonna run it himself, pick up the touchdown run. Garrett Hoke scores for the New York Giants. Here comes Haskins. These are his numbers so far. They're very pedestrian. 1460 on the season, seven touchdowns, seven picks. We really need him to pick it up. Here's Darius Geis, and he's going to break a couple tackles and pick up a first down on his first carry of the ball game. Second and two, it's Geis again. He's going to pick up a first down once more with a nice run there up the middle. First and ten, they give it back to Geis, and here he goes as he picks up a few yards, but another flag on the field here. That's going to be a personal foul. L um, Face mask, 15 yards, and that's going to give us a good opportunity here. Corey Grant spelling in the game. He's back in the lineup, and look at him go as he dives for the end zone, stealing a spell touchdown from Darius Geis. But he goes ahead and picks that one up. Now third and 12. Hoke going to throw. It's Sean Dion Hamilton in his first game back with the team. Going to pick up the interception. And now the Redskins, here's Geis, he's going to run this one inside the 10. That sets up the Redskins here on second and goal. The slant play, it's caught by Paul Richardson Jr. for his fifth receiving touchdown of the season. So now Giants with the ball back and suddenly a deficit. Here's Hoke and he throws to the sideline. Looks like it was caught, and they do call it a catch. Here is a sack from Matthew Ioannidis coming in again. Man, guy has been making some really great plays over these last over this last year and a half in this franchise. Third and 12, and Hoke trying to run for it again. He's not going to be able to pick up the whole thing. Redskins get it back. Third and 20 now, and an inaccurate pass there from Haskins is going to cause this punt to take place. And here's Golden Tate to receive it, and he's got it, and he's just running right by everybody as he gets to the 32 of Washington. Third and eight now. Here's Hoke, and that's going to be a big drop. But the Giants would make a field goal. It's now 14-10, and look at Geis go down the right sideline. Little juke move, and he's going to get himself to the 47 into Giant territory. Second and 11 now. There's a throw, and that's incomplete, but it's pass interference on none other than Josh Norman, who was traded to the Giants for DeAndre Baker. There's the throw, and that's Kelvin Harmon underneath. Going to pick up the first down. Look at Kelvin Harmon doing some things for us. Now a first and 10, and Haskins going to throw to his left, and he has got Damian Rapp. Inside the five, he just can't get into the end zone, and he will get hurt clutching his back there. Third and goal, and Haskins looked like he was going to get sacked, and he eventually is. So the Redskins take their field goal. It's 17 to 10 now. There's a completion, and the Giants going to get a huge one down the left sideline. Landon Collins helps save a touchdown. Keon Wild actually makes the tackle to really save it. First and goal, there's the throw, and Golden Tate going to have a touchdown here. That's going to put the Giants into a tie here with our Redskins. First and ten, it's Darius Geis. Look at the run. He's going to the right sideline. He makes a truck, and he will finally get brought down after a first down gain. Now third and 14 for Haskins. He's going to throw this one downfield. He's got that one complete to Kelvin Harmon for a Redskin first down. Now third and five. Haskins has plenty of time, and he uses it wisely. He's got Harmon down the center of the field, and yes, that is Kelvin Harmon's first career touchdown reception. So good to see him contributing on offense today. Here's Saquon Barkley down the left sideline on second and seven, and that's going to be to the 42-yard line of Washington and set up the Giants really nicely for this. Sterling Shepard on the slant, going to go all the way into the end zone. Reservations for six people, please. So 24 tie ball game at 24. There's Darius Geis, and he's going to pick up a first down on a run play. 
Now second and five, and it's Haskins rolling to his right, throwing to his left, and completing to Jordan Reed. Second and eight. Haskins going to hand this one off. He's got Darius Geis. Geis has some room, and he's going to get inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. First and 10, they give it back to Geis on the right side. He's got an opening, but he is taken out of bounds at the 1. Third and goal now. It's a throw, and it is a completion, and that is Dallas Goddard's first touchdown as a Washington Redskin. 31-24 now. So now here is Saquon Barkley. He picks up the first down on second and two. Now Hoke going to throw to his left. He's got another completion there for the Giants. That'll be another first down. Second and six now for the Giants. And Hoke's going to take off and run with it. He's showing off the legs as he gets inside the 20-yard line to the 16. Setting up the Giants with a third and six now. Hoke's going to throw out of the backfield to Saquon who is brought down right away by Montez Sweat. Giants take the field goal, they're down four. Here in the middle of the fourth quarter, it's an incompletion by Haskins. Giants gonna get their chance here to take a lead. Third and 10, it's Hoke, he's gonna run with it again and slide down, smart decision by him. But it's not a first down, Redskins get it back. Here's Geis making some defenders miss and picking up about 14 yards. Now he's gonna take it to the right side and this time not really anywhere for him to go but a big important play as he is injured on the play. That is not good news for the Redskins. Here on third and 14, it's a big time catch. Kelvin Harmon making some catches today. Here's Corey Grant now in place of Geis, and he will pick up a first down with a run. Here's Bryce Love getting some opportunities as well as he goes down the right sideline, and he's going to get all the way down to the one-yard line. Timeout Redskins. Geis checks back into the ball game, and he's going to pick up the one-yard touchdown run. Man, did he deserve a touchdown today, and I'm really glad he was able to get one. He did a lot of work. So now 38-27, it's an 11-point lead for the Redskins. Hoke throwing one up there. They're going to say he caught that, but the Redskins don't believe so. As you can see, one leg in, one leg out. This ain't college football, buddy. It would be reviewed, and it would be overturned. So now 4th and 10, and an incompletion by Hoke. Redskins going to add a last second field goal just to rub it in a little bit just because we can and it's a 41-27 win for Washington 121.2 quarterback rating for Haskins today much better than last game 14 of 24 three touchdowns Geis ran for 165 yards and a touchdown he was given 28 carries yes he was definitely leaned on Corey Grant with 34 yards and a touchdown in his game back. Kelvin Harmon with a 100-yard receiving game and his first career touchdown. That's very huge for him. Damian Ratley had a few yards. Paul Richardson did get a touchdown, but he didn't get too much more than that. As we look, tackles, Jabril Peppers and Josh Norman had to make tackles all over the place because the Giants were giving up yards. Ioannidis with a sack. There's an interception. Sean Deion Hamilton in his game back. So two guys come back from injury and provide a little bit of spark here for us. Hopefully that continues. Collins, Geis, Haskins, Keon Wild, Vaughn Poole, Puna Ford, Bryce Love, Damian Ratley, Wyatt Teller, Nick Holiday, Kevin Bach, and Ross Mackey all getting upgrades. Let's take a look at these records now the Cleveland Browns have a one game lead in the north the Texans have a one game lead in the AFC South in the AFC East the Jets at 4-3 and 1 lead the division that's that's kind of weird not going to lie AFC West the Broncos stated as the best team in the NFL at 6 and 2 Packers second best team in the NFL at 6 and 2 in the NFC South, it's between the Falcons and the Panthers there, as they are both 5-3. and three. In the NFC East, our division, we're 4-4. Four four. The Eagles are 4-4. Four and four. The Giants are 4-4. Four and, four. and the Cowboys are 3-4-1. and one. So we're not out of it yet, guys. Don't think that we are out of it for one bit. 
The Seahawks are 6 and 2. The Cardinals are 5, 2 and 1. Those are two of the better teams in the whole league. This is the first week that we can actually take a look at some awards listings and Garrett Hoke, who we made a little bitch in both of the games we played him, is currently leading the MVP race. We have no shot at MVP or Coach of the Year at the current time. We're just going to look at NFC because that's all we really care about right now. Offensive Player of the Year, we don't have a candidate. Jameis Winston's in there. I don't know. Maybe Kaz is, like, usering him or something. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, Hoke is leading that one. We don't have an Offensive Rookie to speak of, really. But Defensive Rookie of the Year, Keon Wild is in the lead, and I really hope he can stay there and get the win. Vaughn Poole, as you can see, is in fifth. So we got two candidates for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Best quarterback is Hoke, and Haskins nowhere to be found, and honestly, I don't think he deserves it at this point in the season. Running back, though, Darius Geis is fourth behind Gurley, Kamara, and Elliott. That's very good company for him. Paul Richardson is fourth on best receiver behind Sterling Shepard, Christian Kirk, and Julio Jones. Best offensive lineman, there shouldn't be anybody from our team there, let's be honest. Best defensive lineman, Matthew Ioannidis, finds his way to number 10 on that one. And best linebacker, Montez Sweat, barely breaks the list at number 10. Best DB, look at the rookie, Keon Wild at number 6. And Dustin Hopkins at number 6 in best kicker. So next episode, we're going to take on the Rams and Cowboys, two very tough teams. Guys, do not forget to get your questions in to the email or the Twitter. Again, the email, FranchiseGuy88 at gmail.com. The Twitter, FranchiseYT88. Take care. Have a good one. You're a pretty little star boy.